If you have a Microsoft 365 subscription for business or you have the admin role in your organization, you need to be ready to execute many administration tasks that allow users to take advantage of this great service. My name is Carlos and here I will show you 10 frequent essential tasks that you can do within your Microsoft 365 admin center. Users sometimes forget their passwords and you as the administrator will need to reset them and provide a new password. By default, users cannot reset their own password. By the way, I will show you here how to enable the self-service password reset. In any case, if this option is not available, you need to access the admin center. To access the admin panel, you need to log in into login.microsoftonline.com using your browser. You can also use portal.office.com. Those two URLs will give you access to your Microsoft account. But if you want to access your admin panel directly, you can use admin.microsoft.com. You need to enter your username, click on next, enter your password and click on sign in. Since this account has multi-factor authentication, we need to authorize it from my phone. Within your Microsoft account, you will find the admin icon on the left if you have the admin role. If you don't see the icon here, you can always click on the upper left corner on the nine little dots and you will find admin. Now to reset the password for a user, we need to click on users, active users. You can select the user you want to reset the password and you will find the option here, reset password. You will have the option to create a password automatically by clicking here or you can enter the password. You will also have the option to ask the user to change their password when they first sign in. And if you select this option, email the sign in info to me, you can enter here the email address where it will be sent to. Once you complete all the options, you click on reset password. Aliases are useful in many cases. They can be used to shorten the user's email address or to provide a different email address to a single user. For example, like sales, support, admin, accounting, and so on. To create an alias, you click on users, active users, and on the right, you select the users you want to create the alias for. Click on the user. On the right, you will find aliases. And then you can click manage username and email. This user already have some aliases and we can see them listed here. To create a new alias, we just enter it here. It is going to be car and we click on add. If we scroll down, we will see the alias listed here and then click on save changes. The new alias is now created and the user will be ready to receive emails using the new alias. In some cases, you may want to forward the email of a specific user to another email address. Be aware that forwarding to an external email address, I mean to a different domain name, could be restricted by default in Microsoft 365. Here I have a video that shows you how to allow and configure a forwarder to an external email address. Now let's see how to configure a forwarder. Now we click on users, active users, and then we click on the users we want to create the forwarder. We select it. On the right, we will click on the mail tab. And here on the right, we will find email forwarding. Then we click on manage email forwarding. We check this box forward all emails sent to this mailbox. And then we enter the email address we want to forward the emails. We can select the option to keep a copy of forward emails in this mailbox. Probably most of the time, this is what you will want to do. Once you enter the email address, then you click on save changes. Remember, if you are forwarding to an external email address, you will need to remove the restrictions to forward to external email addresses. If for any reason you need to rename a username or email address, you can do this. To change the username or email address, you click on Users, Active Users, and then select the user you want to change the email address. On the right, you will need to click on Manage Username. Then you will be able to enter the new username. Then click on Save Changes, and the new username is now active. If I close here, and click on the user again, you will find that the username has been already changed. By the way, if this user has a mailbox, 
the old username will become an alias. If a user has an alias and you want to make the alias the new username, you can click on the user, then click on manage username and email, and you can click on the three little dots on the right side of the alias, and you will find the option, change to primary email. The primary email address or username has changed, and now I just need to click save changes. This will change the username using a alias. Delete a user. This may seem a single straightforward task, but there are some considerations before proceeding. For example, do you want to keep the data or just want to delete it with a user? The data will be automatically deleted after 30 days of deleting the user. The license will be available to create a new user just right after deleting the user. If you want to delete the user but want to keep his or her emails, then you can see this video about share mailboxes. It is a nice way to keep the emails of any users that you need to delete. We click on users, active users, and then we select the users we want to delete. On the top, we will find delete user. You can read here. You can restore deleted users and their data for up to 30 days after you delete them. The license will be unassigned once we remove the user. All the alias will be removed. For this particular user, there is no delegated permissions. And here we have this option. Give another user access to OneDrive file for 30 days after the user is deleted. So it gives you the opportunity to transfer OneDrive files to another user. And also, you can give another user access to these emails. Once I'm ready to delete the users, I just click on Delete User. When creating a new user in Microsoft 365, you need to make sure you have a license available. To create a new user, you click on Users, Active Users, and then click on Add a User. You will need to enter the information for this new user. First name, last name, the display name, and the username. On the right, you will be able to select what domain name you want to use. If you have several domain names, you will be able to select it here. For example, in this case, we have more than one domain name. So you can select which domain name you want for this user. You can check here and allow Microsoft to generate the password automatically. You can request the users to change the password at the first sign in. And also you can send information directly to an alternate email address of this user. Then you click on next. You will select the location for this user. If you have license available, you will be able to assign the license for this user. Or if you don't have the license, you can create a user and then assign the license when you have it available by clicking here. Then you click on next. If you want to assign any admin role to this user, you can do it here. By clicking here, you select admin center access and then you can select the type of admin access that he will have. For these users, I don't want to assign any admin access. So I click here and click on next. I can review all the information for this new user and then click finish adding. The username and password will be displayed here. So I can copy this information and send it to the user. If you don't have a license available when creating a new user, you can purchase it within the Microsoft 365 admin panel by following these steps. You can click on the marketplace. In some cases, some admin panels will have the marketplace option within the billing. So sometimes you need to click on billing and you will see purchase services instead of marketplace. In this admin panel, I'll see marketplace. So I click on here, I can select all products and I will be able to purchase a different kind of licenses available from Microsoft. In this case, I may want, for example, to select a Microsoft 365 license and if you want to buy, for example, a Microsoft 365 Business Basic, you will find it here and click on Details. And if you scroll down, you will be able to see the, all the details about this type of license. Then you click on Manage. And you can select how many licenses you want to purchase. At this point, you will be able to update your billing information and click on Buy Licenses. Once you complete the purchase of the license, you will be able to assign it to the user. Self-service password reset can facilitate your work as the administrator and also facilitate your user's life. By default, it is disabled in Microsoft 365. Here is how you can enable it. 
To enable the self-service password reset, we need to click on Settings, Organization Settings, and then on the right, you click on Security and Privacy. If you scroll down, you will find Self-Service Password Reset. On the right, this option is actually handled in the Azure portal. So we can click here and it will take us directly to the portal. Then we can choose for none, selected users or all the users. Then we can click on Save. After saving this option, all the users will be prompted to enter the specific information so they will be able to reset their own password. Here is how you can check the user storage in your admin panel. To check the storage, you have actually two options. You can click on Users, then Active Users. Then you select the users you want to check the storage. On the right, you will see Mail. And you will see the storage that this mailbox is using at this moment. 121 megabytes. If you click on the OneDrive tab, you will find how much storage is using in OneDrive. A different alternative is on their reports. We can close here. On the left, we will see reports and then usage. Then exchange. On the right, we will see mailbox usage. If we scroll down, we will see the information of the storage used by every user. When a user loses or change his or her phone, you as the administrator may need to reset the multi-factor authentication for that specific user, so he or she can configure the new device again. To reset the multi-factor authentication for a user, we need to click on Users, Active Users. You need to click on Multi-factor Authentication here on the top. Now you can select the users you want to reset the multi-factor authentication. On the right, you click on Manage User Settings. And you have three options here. The one to reset the multi-factor authentication is the first one. Requires selected users to provide contact method again. You select it here and click on Save. Managing your Microsoft 365 service is an essential job. It involves many tasks that allow your users to be more productive. Now, I would like to hear from you. Do you have any comment or questions? Put it here down below so all can benefit from them. Maybe you can suggest other important tasks. If you like this video or find it useful, feel free to subscribe. Maybe consider supporting the channel by using the super thanks button. Thank you for watching and see you next time.